one tends to think of chemistry as chemicals, but it's actually quite remarkable how broad the subject has become and in many ways how unchemical it is becoming. It is an exciting time to be a chemist because chemists have started breaking the boundaries between chemistry and other disciplines. I think the thing that excites me is often our work has either been applied or, or found real-world solutions. We work with companies to try and see how that fundamental science might be able to solve a problem. The finalists this year, I think it's a very nice representation of the breadth of chemistry. What we all have in common is that it is all about interactions. And that interaction can be between two atoms, that interaction can be in the context of making large structures, or that interaction can be between large structures. I pretty much spend my entire scientific existence trying to see things that nobody's seen before. And we started weighing things 5,000 years ago, and then in 1918, Aston developed the mass spectrometer. The focus of our work is to use light scattering to visualize and then quantify the signal that comes from a single molecule scattering light. We shine light on a piece of glass and we look at the light that comes back and when a biomolecule binds to that piece of glass, we get a little bit less light back, which means that if you make that measurement very, very, very accurate, then you can observe that the biomolecule has bound and you can quantify how big that biomolecule is. The key thing that our contribution in this context is that not only do we see molecules, but we can actually weigh them genuinely just by looking at it. What we now have is a third way of, of weighing things. We now can weigh molecules by looking at them, and we can do it in solution. This is an example of an organic molecule. It's made mainly of carbon, the black balls, and of hydrogen, the white balls, which provide the skeleton of the molecule. The color balls are other elements such as oxygen or nitrogen and they provide the functionality. What I'm interested in is on how to break the very strong carbon-hydrogen bonds and replace them with other functionalities. What we have discovered is a way to take complex molecules and modify them selectively through one of their carbon-hydrogen bonds into completely new molecules that can then be used, for example, for medicinal chemistry. There are parallels between Rachel's research and mine in the sense that we both work into trying to make synthesis of complex molecules a lot more efficient. Igor's work is beautiful and an elegant organic chemistry work in small molecules. We work on much larger molecules and actually the methods that we have to use to characterise our molecules are quite similar to some of the work that Philip does. So we use inspiration from both of them. So I'm a synthetic polymer chemist trying to take inspiration from nature to try and actually build polymers that have higher value and more function so that we can actually start to mimic some of nature's complexity. We could start to create materials that would have autonomous self-healing, be able to, to really start to become almost living materials that are synthetic and we've been developing DNA mechanisms that can either walk along a track or pull molecules out of solution to actually build up. So we can essentially program what sequence of monomers we want to put together to make a polymer. So starting to think about materials discovery in the same way that biologists select for function of enzymes or proteins, etc. If we can quantify very, very accurately the processes that lead to Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, and then we can quantify which drugs inhibit which parts of the process, then that will help us find a cure to switch off. I love to cook. Over the last 10 years, my approach to cooking has evolved dramatically. It is an experiment. You change little bits, and then you look at what happens at the end. I have two little girls, Matilda, who's almost three, and Rosemary, who's four. Some of the work that we're starting to do is probably one of the important things I'd hope make a better future for them. During my undergraduate and during my PhD, there wasn't a female professor in either of the schools of chemistry that I was in. So last summer I took on the role of head of school here at the University of Birmingham. I hope I can have an impact by taking on a leadership role. There's a really nice cafe in campus that I like to go to and uh, read. The great thing about science is that it's at the borderline between reality and science fiction somehow. So you are exploring the unknown and uh, by definition, uh, you never know what you could uh, find. Being the Blavatnik Laureate, of course, is an incredible honor. 
clarifies to the people who work with me that their work is important. The students and the postdocs who actually do the work, put in the long hours, who make the impossible possible. So I see this as much as an award for them as it is for myself. My dream is to see the synthesis of complex molecules simplified to the point where any synthesis of any molecule becomes routine. To imagine the possibilities for health, agriculture, technological advancement, if we could make any molecules we wanted just at the push of a button. We could make drugs quicker, more potent, with less side effects, cheaper, all through the effects of this type of research. I'd like to think that we've not just done chemistry for the sake of doing chemistry, we've pushed the understanding of how we make things and develop new methodologies and actually be able to use them to advance material science. What really becomes important is that you have the courage to do something different and that you do it well. Pushing the boundaries of what is possible and when you do that and you keep doing that, eventually you're going to get somewhere that is really going to change the way people do things. Thank you.